Today, in this lecture, we are going to talk about concepts related to reabsorption mechanisms in the nephron tubules. In the last lecture, we started discussing tubular reabsorption is an important step in the urine formation by the kidneys. Now, we discussed that when the urine formation process begins, initially there is filtration of fluid in the nephron and after filtration, the next step is tubular reabsorption. The, the filtrate which has been filtered from the glomerular capillaries into the Bowman's capsule and it is moving along the nephron tubule, it's some of the component of that filtrate, some solutes and some water component gets reabsorbed from the proximal or distal tubules into the peritubular capillaries. Now, in this lecture, we will focus on the mechanisms which are used or which are helpful in the reabsorption process. Now, is we have previously discussed so many times that the kidney is made of thousands of nephron. Each nephron is filtering the blood and once the blood has been filtered, it the filtrate moves from the Bowman's capsule into the proximal tubule, tubule from the proximal tubule into the loop of Henle, then the distal tubule, then the collecting tubule, collecting ducts, and finally the urine is excreted. But when the, the filtrate is moving through different parts of the nephron tubules, different changing changes occur in the concentration of the filtrate. And the first step after filtration is the reabsorption. Now, this is the uh, Bowman's capsule, here is the proximal tubule, and here we have the uh, afferent and efferent vessels. Now this thing has been enlarged here, and we see that inside the nephron we have this afferent and efferent vessels, these are the glomerular capillaries, and filtration is occurring in these uh, capillaries, the filtrate then is entering the Bowman's capsule and is moving through the proximal tubule. We discussed that the, the concentration of different substances in the proximal tubule and the excreted urine is different. For example, in the proximal tubule, the concentration of uh, glucose is 180 gram or the filtration, the amount of glucose filtered per day is 180, 180 grams per day it is filtered and the amount of glucose excreted in urine is zero because almost 100% of this glucose is reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. But if we see the creatinine, the amount of creatinine excreted, sorry, filtered in the uh, uh, proximal tubule is 1.8 gram per day. 1.8 gram per day. And the amount excreted in urine is also 1.8 gram. So almost 0% of this creatinine is reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. Now we will focus on the reabsorption mechanisms. How these different substances get reabsorbed from this tubule into the peritubular capillaries. If we dissect this area, if we dissect this area, under the microscope, the, the different cells in the tubule will look like this. So the inside of the tubule, the inside of the tubule is, has cells like this. All the cells are connected to each other. And here we have the peritubular capillaries. These are the peritubular capillaries here. So filtr filtration process is occurring here. Then after fil filtration, the reabsorption process is occurring. And after reabsorption, the remaining filtrate is excreted out of urine. Now the mechanisms used for the reabsorption may include passive and active diffusion passive or active transport so it may be passive reabsorption passive reabsorption and active reabsorption now the passive reabsorption simply means in this mechanism the substances which are filtered here they will directly move from this area into the peritubular capillaries because their concentration in the proximal tubule is high. The concentration of those substances in the tubule is high and their concentration in the these cells, in the tubule cells and in the blood is low. So they naturally move, they naturally move from this area to this area. For example, water, the diffusion of water from a region with high concentration of water to region with low concentration of water. And this process is known as osmosis. And this osmosis is basically a passive reabsorption mechanism. Another mechanism for the reabsorption of different solutes from the nephron tubule into the peritubular capillaries is active reabsorption. Now in active reabsorption, energy is used. Energy is used, for example, by sodium, potassium, pump. Some substances are actively absorbed, reabsorbed from this area into the peritubular capillaries. Now, when these substances enter from the tubular lumen, from the proximal tubule, into the tubular cells and the interstitial fluid, the interstitial fluid or the extracellular spaces, they may move through the cell membrane. That is the transcellular path. They may move through the cell membrane to the transcellular path or the substances, the fluid, the water or different solutes like sodium, potassium, etc. They may move through paracellular path. So the mechanisms may be passive reabsorption or active reabsorption and the paths may be paracellular path or transcellular path. Now the passive reabsorption is diffusion. It is also known as diffusion and in the case of water, it is known as osmosis. So those substances in which the concentration on this side in the proximal tubule is very high, they may move under, in the natural tendency towards the uh, tubule cells and towards the peritubular capillaries. And the substances in which the concentration either may be equal or the concentration is high. For example, creatinine is completely deabsorbed. Even if its concentration is high here, 
then those substances may be actively reabsorbed by using the sodium potassium pump or some other pumps any pump which will generate enough energy which will grab these substances from the tubule lumen into the peritubular capillaries but before moving into the peritubular capillaries these substances may enter into the spaces between the different cells now these are different cells these are different cells of the tubule and here we have the lumen of the tubule but all the cells are connected with tight junctions here we have the tight junctions these cells these cells are connected with each other through tight junctions but later on there is some space the intercellular space as well so substances may move directly through paracellular path directly into this space or they may move through this transcellular path they may either move through the cell membrane or they may move through the tight junctions ultimately into the intercellular spaces into the endocell and to and intercellular spaces sorry from the intercellular spaces through bulk flow through bulk flow those substances may enter from the interstitial fluid interstitial fluid or interstitial space into the peritubular capillaries now the peritubular capillaries they behave like veins they behave they behave like veins now the bulk flow basically the bulk flow is due to the forces the forces which are either pulling or pushing the fluid from the uh, interstitial fluid into the capillaries or from the capillaries into the interstitial fluid for example we discussed the um, interstitial colloid osmotic pressure and uh, interstitial hydrostatic pressure similarly we discussed the interstitial hydrostatic pressure uh, sorry the hydrostatic pressure inside the capillaries and the colloid osmotic pressure in the capillaries so those pressures or pressures which either uh, encourage or force the substances to move into or out of the capillaries or into or out of the interstitial spaces those forces basically helps the different kind of solutes and water to move through bulk flow from the interstitial spaces into the peritubular capillaries because at this end at this end these peritubular capillaries they are acting as veins they are acting as veins and they have the ability the tendency to absorb substances at this end at this end the hydrostatic pressure is very high and that force is only pushing the different solutes the filtrate to move out into the bowman's capsule here the pressure is low so through the bulk flow through the bulk flow water and different solute will move through different forces from the interstitial spaces or the intercellular spaces into the peritubular capillaries through uh, different mechanisms so to summarize the reabsorption mechanisms may be passive reabsorption or active reabsorption the passive reabsorption will not need any energy but active reabsorption will need energy and then when these solutes and water are reabsorbed they may either move through the paracellular path through the tight junctions or through the transcellular path through the cell membranes and then after going through the transcellular path the substances may enter into the intercellular space after entering the intercellular spaces they may enter the interstitial space and from the interstitial spaces the extracellular spaces those solutes those uh, you know, water and different uh, fluids may move through bulk flow into the peritubular capillaries now in the coming lectures we will discuss in detail the active method of reabsorption of or the active reabsorption method which will use the sodium potassium pump or different other uh, active methods to and we will also discuss the different types of solutes which are reabsorbed actively from the proximal tubule into the uh, uh, these different cells and then into the peritubular capillaries thanks a lot for watching the video